So I want you guys to be able to see how this whole foreign exchange rate thing actually plays out and how you might see it play out in your own life. Because uh, it actually played out in my life recently, uh, actually back in the spring of 2020, because um, my wife and I had been planning to take a trip in the summer of 2020 to London. And so back in January of 2020, we had done all of our bookings and stuff for us to be able to uh, travel in the summer. And obviously that didn't really play out. But what we did is we went ahead and in January, we had booked our hotel room. And so here's our booking confirmation. And we we're going to stay for a couple nights at this hotel. And if you notice, it says that the total price that we had to pay, including taxes, was 427 British pounds. Now, here's the thing. I don't carry British pounds. I don't hold British pounds. And therefore, that conversion had to take place, meaning I had to make a purchase of British pounds first in order to then reserve my hotel. However, I didn't have to do this myself. Thankfully, my credit card company does it for me. They just said, hey, you know, you know, hotel, you charge us, the credit card company, whatever it is, we'll convert it. And then that's what we're going to charge you in US dollars. And so if you look at my statement, um, from the day that I reserved it, you can see here it is $556.58 is what I was actually charged for this 427 pound hotel reservation. So what exactly does that mean? Well, what it means is that I needed $556.58 in order to buy 427 British pounds. So based on that, what's the exchange rate? Well, if we know that 427 pounds is the same thing as $556.58, meaning that 427 pounds purchases $556.58, or as we see here, $556.58 purchases 427 pounds, we can figure out the exchange rate. We want to get this down to just say, well, how about just for one pound? So we would divide both sides by 427, and we get the exchange rate. And the exchange rate was $1, or sorry, one pound is equal to $1.30. So one British pound is equal to $1.30. Or that for every single pound I wanted to purchase, I'd have to give up $1.30. And our math here, let's see if it checks out. I pulled up the foreign exchange um, like kind of graph from one of these websites. And here's what it shows for those last couple months of uh, 20, uh, 2019 and into 2020. And sure enough, there, January 15th, which is when it shows up in my credit card statement, it was $1.30 for a British pound. So not only did our math... Uh, work out for us, but then we can back it up with information from a website. That's awesome. Now, here's what I want to see, because uh, I, I, you know, I was trying to be smart and I made sure to get the the room with free cancellation just in case something came up. And boy, was I lucky because something came up. Right? Uh, it became pretty evident fairly quick that our our trip was getting canceled, and we knew that we weren't going to be able to travel, and I had to put in a request in order to get my refund. So like I had to cancel the hotel in order to get a refund. But here's one thing I want to see is that as time went on, I want to show you what happened to the British pound. Uh, Cause this is what we're saying. You know, this is our graph we're looking at, but uh, in March uh, it kind of took a, a, a nosedive and this happened for a few reasons. I mean, there was ongoing um, nervousness about uh, what was going on with Brexit and England leaving the EU um, not only that, like, I think this is around the time that their prime minister, Boris Johnson, got COVID. And so, like, it was just like there was a lot of confidence that was being lost in the British pound. And a lot of people were, like, completely running away from the British pound. And um, the British pound was actually um, losing a lot of value. And, uh, as, and as you can see is because now the British pound no longer purchases as many U.S. dollars as it once did. It is now weaker. It's depreciated. So it hit its bottom point on March 19th. And so here's what I want to ask. What would have happened if I would have asked for my refund on March 19th? Because again, like I said, I got the free cancellation. I wanted to make sure that I was going to get all my money back. But we got to think about this exchange rate thing. So if I asked for my refund on March 19th, my hotel would give me back 427 pounds. But what does that really mean? Right? Really what that means is I would get back however many dollars 427 pounds could purchase. So how much was that? Right? Well, according to this graph on March 19th, the exchange rate 
was one pound was equal to a dollar fourteen. But remember, I would be getting back four hundred and twenty-seven of those pounds. So one pound is equal to a dollar fourteen. If we multiply both sides by four twenty-seven, what we find out is that I would be getting back four hundred and eighty-six dollars and seventy-eight cents. Now, here's why that's a little problematic because if you remember. I initially paid $556.58 and I thought this was supposed to be free cancellation, right? Well, it is, but because of exchange rates, they can have huge impacts on uh, our, our currencies, especially depending on how you are holding that money. Like in a sense, some of my money was being held at a British hotel and because of that, it was tied to the British pound. So as the British pound lost value, some of my money was losing value. So if we do the math here, what we end up finding is that if I would have asked for my refund on March 19th, I would have lost $69.80, right? Now, um, again, it it really not a big deal. The the pound ended up, ended up recovering after this. I you know, waited it out. Everything turned out fine. And really in the grand scheme of things with COVID, it was not a big deal at all. But really what I wanted to do was illustrate this point to you guys to show you that like Exchange rates do affect us on a daily basis, uh, and especially when you're making purchases that involve overseas things. And it, it might not even be directly related to a purchase you make, but when we think about how much international trade is tied to foreign exchange, when we talk about the exchange of, of intermediate goods and how these intermediate parts or goods are being bought between different countries and exchange rates, those fluctuations can change the cost of our final goods and services. So it is important for us to be aware and understand how these exchange rates work and how they can have impacts on us long term.